Hey everybody, it's Joe Deganzik and it's another sensor home automation product today in our accidental mini series that we started in January with the Roost Smart Battery for your old-fashioned smoke alarms. We continued with the Insteon water leak sensor and today we've got a sensor that well, it's kind of along the lines of water, but it doesn't really detect water. It really is more about what's going on outside your home. And that's the Eve weather sensor from Elgato. It's HomeKit enabled, so definitely works uh, with home automation devices in the HomeKit universe. I kind of wish it could work a little bit outside that, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Elgato is no stranger to the Mac world. They've been making uh, Mac compatible products for many years, and their Eve line of HomeKit enabled products was announced and went on sale last year. The Eve weather sensor um, does a great job at detecting various things like temperature, barometric pressure, and humidity, and with HomeKit, you can make it part of your home automation system. We'll get a little bit more details on what it can currently do and what it can do in the future a little bit later. But let's just take it out of the box. Very simple, um, beautiful packaging. You pull it out of the box and you get, well, that's what you would expect. The Eve Weather Sensor, a tiny like, you know, it's about the size of an original Apple TV. Uh, it's white, a nice case and you get two AA batteries with it that should last about three months according to Elgato. Since it is HomeKit enabled for iOS, it's a snap to set up. Now this is a Bluetooth only HomeKit device, which means you don't have to remember your Wi-Fi password or what your Wi-Fi network name is or deal with any of those potential problems. You literally can link it up right to your iOS device through Bluetooth identify it um, through the camera, whether you know identifying for the little code or just type it in and basically you're done in less than a minute. Now you might be wondering why I'm doing a review of a weather sensor at all. I mean, I live in Phoenix and for most people around the country and around the world, they think of Phoenix as a very hot, sunny, dry place and you would be right. But occasionally clouds do roll in. We get a raindrop or two equaling about six to seven inches of rainfall per year. So when it does rain here, when the weather does change and temperatures go up and down, especially in our springtime, which was supposed to happen, but we haven't gotten a lot of rain this spring, it's nice to know what's actually going on. And here's another reason why you might want to have a weather sensor at home, because the weather that we normally get from forecasts and current information from all of these on-demand services, such as from the Amazon Echo and Siri, Cortana, Google Now, that information comes from your local airport or some other monitoring station that might be far away from your house, could be five, 10 miles away from your house or more. Here in the desert, here in Phoenix, we get isolated storms and isolated showers. It could literally be raining cats and dogs in this square block and one mile away, it could be bone dry or vice versa. So when I'm not at home, it would be nice to know, you know, is it actually raining? What's the weather there? Like maybe do I need to actually get home and cover up some plants or something else in the backyard that I left uncovered? Who knows? But a weather sensor at your own home location is pretty cool. It has up to 150 foot range on Bluetooth Smart or Bluetooth Energy, whatever you wanna call it. I have it located roughly 40 feet away outside total distance from the Apple TV, which is sitting behind me uh, inside the TV stand. And then the tree that the sensor is on or mounted in is outside through the door, through a wall, and it's still working just great. I've been using it for about two weeks and I'm very happy with it. The sensor does store up to two weeks of data that it will download automatically once you open up the app if you haven't had it open recently. And again, it is a HomeKit product, so it's seamlessly integrated with the Apple TV third and fourth generation acting as a link to the outside world. I'm kind of a data guy and I like to see all of the little data points occasionally. So it's really nice that they have built all of these graphs and you can really dial down into the bits of data hourly, weekly, daily. You can even export it as CSV files and slice and dice it and make your own graphs in Excel or your own favorite uh, spreadsheet program. So overall, it's a great weather sensor. Now, the other thing you're saying well, that's great that it does weather, but what about home automation? Like, 
what about triggering based on data and you know temperature changes and all that well right now it's not turned on and this is not eve uh, this is not elgato's fault apple introduced triggers which are the magic of home automation you know press a button something else happens ios 9 released last year by apple introduced triggers for the first time to HomeKit, but not for Bluetooth only devices, most likely because of battery life and trying to get all of that stuff to stay in sync and not have the batteries last about two weeks instead of several months. I would say look for these triggers to be enabled for Bluetooth only devices like the Eve products in iOS 10. It's a big year. It's a big number change. It's about time for Apple to really step up its game with HomeKit and home automation, and this is the year to do it. So overall, I think it's a great little weather sensor. It's compact. You can stick it outside. A little rain will not hurt it. It's only 50 bucks, and it is future-proof due to software upgrades. You can get it in our Lighting Answers official Amazon store or through the links in the description. You know, we'll have all that information for you. So we'll be reviewing a couple other Eve products in the couple in the coming weeks and months, and stay tuned for those. Otherwise, keep sending in your questions to questions at lightinganswers.tv. Don't forget to subscribe for all of the episodes, and of course, our great two-year anniversary special coming up live at 10 a.m. Pacific, April 13th, next week. Until then, I'm Jody Ganzik. See you next time.